Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today uh, I'm going to be working on my Kearney Trekker Model 3H horizontal mill machine. Some time ago, uh, I acquired a parking attachment for this uh, mill, uh, which is an attachment that was offered by K&T. And basically what it is, it's a bracket that kind of hangs on the side right here that has two little mini stub uh, arbor supports that stick out of it. And what you use it for is your vertical head, if you have one for your machine, it can mount over here on the side and there's a little built-in crane that swings it around so that you can connect it to here. So when you have this parking attachment, when the uh, vertical head is not in use, it just kind of hangs over here on the side of the machine. And when you get ready to use it, you just kind of swing it around and hook it up. Makes it very easy to transition this between machine between uh, horizontal milling, which is what it's set up for right now, to vertical milling uh, or universal milling in my case, because I have the universal head that will rotate to whatever angles I need. I've got some jobs coming up that I really need to use that uh, vertical head on. And while I have used it in the past, just coming in here with an engine hoist to get it mounted on here, it's time to just take the time to get this parking attachment mounted over here on the machine where I don't have to do that every single time. That's the game plan. So uh, let's uh, get our parking attachment uh, and go ahead and start working on it, see if we can get it installed. So this is the actual parking attachment right here. And you can kind of see what we got. This thing just kind of hangs on the side. There's a couple of uh, brackets up here in the top where uh, the bolt comes through to the top that adjusts the overarm supports. It kind of hangs on those. There's a couple of set screws that kind of set on a ledge here. And then you got some bolts on here that bolt this to the front of the machine. But what you really see here are the two bosses that the, um, Overarm that basically mimics the overarm supports so the same diameter, the same distance apart, and your head just kind of slides up on this. So uh, this is what we're going to be mounting over on the machine today. First thing I need to do though is get this thing cleaned up because it is absolutely nasty. It is in as found condition, and I will mention that uh, John Germain uh, over in the West Coast, I think it's Oregon. Um, actually found this in a machinery dealer over here. He was looking for something in there and came across some parts for K&T and sent me some notes. And sure enough, um, he was able to find several little accessories uh, that fit my machine and I was able to work out a deal and he actually picked them up and shipped them to me. And this was one of the items that I was able to get and this haven't had a chance to get on the machine. I'm gonna get it cleaned up and uh, get some of that gunk off of it and then we'll get ready to go put her on the machine hopefully. I'm just going to use a little bit of degreaser here and kind of squirt this thing down. And we'll come in here and see if we can start cleaning her up. That is looking much, much better. Unfortunately, uh, the paint color doesn't match that of my machine. I really kind of had grand visions of repainting my machine and getting this repainted and putting it all together, but I've about come to the conclusion that I'm probably just not going to be repainting that machine. It doesn't need it that bad. And uh, yeah, I like nice looking machines, but if the original paint isn't in just terrible condition, there's something to be said for, you know, leaving the original paint on a machine, letting it show its, uh, show its age and show its, uh, it's been used over the years. So, um, a lot of the machines that I end up working on are in such bad shape. I really don't have a choice hardly, but to strip them and repaint them. But that machine's in pretty good shape. My K and T milling machine. So, um, all right, I'm gonna flip this over and clean the backside of it. You won't be able to see it on the machine, but it needs to be cleaned as well. So we're gonna do that. We need to get the machine prepped over here, ready for this to receive. There's a couple things we need to do. First off, I need to take off this plate here. This is a vent. Uh, that's not the right screw that goes in there, but we're gonna take it out. Uh, this is just a little air vent that goes on the side of the machine uh, that allows there to get some uh, breathing up inside of this and the parking attachment is basically going to 
bolt up on the bolts here and this plate is actually going to come off and it'll actually bolt on the outside of the parking attachment. So it'll be sticking out a little bit, still be there, but uh, be in a different position. Uh, let me get a wrench to pull that off. All right, let's see if we can get this. We'll put that in there. I'll put a wrench on this square shank. That's all it took, just a little bit of leverage. Right, let's get this off. And we also gotta do some stuff up top to prep, prep for it. Now, let's see if this will come off. just trying to open that crack up. I think what may have happened is, is someone used some silicon to, as a gasket in this, um, and it's now kind of stuck in place. That's my guess. There we go, it's coming now. And, yep, that's exactly what it was. They used a silicon gasket material in there and it was just stuck. All right, that is off. Let's get the top ready up here. So this is up on the very top of the machine. There's my overarm supports, and there's two uh, bolts that basically clamp down these overarm supports and keep them from moving out, and there's a little block that clamps down on top of it. We need to take all this out. There's a uh, Kind of a piece of uh, all thread or threaded stud, whatever you want to call it, that this uh, goes into. And basically, when you tighten this up, what it's doing is it's just clamping down on this uh, piece here, which clamps down on those overarm supports and keeps it locked in place. Uh, we're going to be using these studs to actually uh, mount the top of the parking attachment on and we have to make, use a longer stud than what came originally in the machine. So I need to pull these off and we need to actually, uh, whoops, change those studs out. So we'll pull the caps off. There is a uh, spring in there and the stud and I'm just going to take a pair of channel lock pliers. I was able to just do that to get the other one out. We'll uh, get in here and hopefully get that broken loose. Well, I may have to use a jam nut to get it off. We'll get it out of there anyway, and then I'm gonna have to make some new ones to go in here. And I just got some all thread that uh, we're gonna cut to the right length and, and put in these. All right, I got a jam nut on it. Just two nuts jammed together and that was enough to break it loose with a proper wrench. So we'll go ahead and pull that out. All right, let's get some new studs cut. So here we go, some all thread. This is a three quarter inch all thread. We're just gonna go ahead and screw these in on both of these studs, or both of these holes. And this will just give me a little bit extra height on the top side here. Uh, for the added thickness of that flange, it's gonna kinda hook around on these. So we'll go ahead and get these put back in. I am wanting to kinda tighten those in there. So again, I'm gonna put two nuts on here, make a uh, jam nut, let me go get my wrench where I can jam those together. Put this wrench on the bottom in here. Put this wrench on the top. I'm going to jam those together. And now I should be able to drive that down and get it good and tight, seated in the bottom of that hole. And now we can take the jam nuts off. Go. 
and we'll do the same thing over here. Drop our springs back in here, and then uh, these will fit right down in that hole. All right, now these are on that spring. When you tighten that bolt up, it clamps these down. Again, tightens everything up. But we got room on the top for the uh, parking attachment to mount to. So uh, let's go ahead and see if we can get it on the machine, the parking attachment. All right, I'm just kind of manhandling this thing. It's heavy, but I can handle it. We'll get those on the hooks on the top. And uh, kind of see where we're at over here. All right, I got a problem. There's a little uh, boss here on the side, and I've heard of other people having this problem too. This is basically just the uh, backside of the crank on the other side of this that we use to feed the overarms in and out. It's kind of an overarm support um, rack and pinion in there. And the outside flange of this is just hitting on the side of my parking attachment. And I need about a quarter of an inch for it to move over this direction. Why they made it this way, I don't know. This little outside knob on here serves no purpose whatsoever. I asked Ron Grundy at K&T why they did it that way, and he just kind of said, hat rack maybe? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no real reason for this to be here. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is probably, I hate to do this, but I'm gonna probably just have to get my grinder out and uh, grind this knob back a little bit over here where this thing will fit up on there like it should. And hopefully then we can get it to uh, where it'll bolt in and like it's supposed to. All right, let me uh, pull it back off and yeah, it's gonna probably be a little trial and error going back and forth to get this right. So this is the culprit that we were talking about. And again, it just, I don't know why it needs this outside flange on here. It serves no purpose at all. Uh, like I said, it's just kind of a cap that holds the, that rod in there. I think there is a pin that holds that in place, but why it needs that outside flange, I don't know. And nobody that I've talked to knows. So again, we're probably just going to have to grind that off to make it fit. Don't like doing that, but I just don't know what else to do. Uh, while I'm zoomed in here, a couple other interesting things uh, to show here in case you're not familiar. All K&T machines will have a serial number on them and it'll be stamped somewhere on the machine. This is an example right here, uh, serial number 28-5000. And the way that K&T did their serial numbers is they would make machines or accessories, attachments, whatever it was, they would make them in, in lots. So this is lot 5000 and this is the 28th machine in that lot. Now, I actually have a copy of the serial number records for K&T. It's actually over on the VintageMachine.org website too. You can go look them up. And you can look up this number right here, the 5,000 number, and it will tell you uh, what it is. So if you're trying to identify something and you got the serial number, you don't know, don't know what the part was or what it came off of, you can look it up there. And it'll also tell you when that lot was completed. Um, I don't remember the exact date on this one, but I think that this was a it was either a lot of uh, 30 or 50 machines, and it actually says Model K uh, mill machines, uh, which a Model K, a 2K, and a 3H in the K and T line, basically the same machine, but they had different uh, gear ratios on the inside, but the housings and everything else were pretty much identical. Uh, this one was made in a batch of, of a Model Ks, even though it is a Model H. And I, I think the date was 1946, if I remember right. And we know uh, right here, we got a tag on here, the Birmingham Ordnance District, War Department. Uh, and it doesn't have any other information. It does have a serial number, but uh, based on this tag right here, this machine was sold during World War II for the war effort in an ordnance factory in Alabama, uh, Birmingham, Alabama. And 
as was the case, you know, they ordered this machine when the war was ongoing, uh, but the war ended before the machine was made, but the, the machine was ordered, the government honored it, so it was delivered to the Birmingham Ordnance District. Now, it's very likely that the machine was never actually used because the war was over. I'm sure they had surplus ammunition. It might have been. I, I don't know the history. I don't know exactly, but if it, even if it did, it probably saw very little use. Uh, we then know that it went to the Young and Van Supply Company in Birmingham, Alabama. They probably bought it off a of surplus. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's scratched on here. Georgia Tech, and there's a number, 256, looks like 53 scratched in there. This machine was uh, obtained by Georgia Tech uh, and it was used in their shops. How they got it, I don't know whether they got it from the supply company or whether they bought it off of government surplus at the end of the war, I don't know. Likely it was just surplused and Georgia Tech picked it up. It was probably brand spanking new machine and this machine resided at Georgia Tech in Atlanta, Georgia in their machine shops there that they trained students with for many, many years. The person that I got it from actually got it from an auction that was being sold from Georgia Tech. So we kind of know the history of where it went. It went to the uh, ordnance factory, went to Georgia Tech, went to my friend who had it for just a very short period of time, and now it's with me. Uh, and I can tell you that this machine has not seen a lot of use. Uh, it's, it's, when you look at the wear areas, it's very low wear machine. So that's good. All right, enough talking. I'm going to get in here and uh, work on this thing and try to get it where we can get that up on there. I hate to butcher that up, but I just don't know any other thing to do. So I did uh, cover up this hole. I don't want any grinding dust getting down into the crankcase of my machine. I put a mark Sharpie pin on here, kind of the area I want to grind off, and we're just going to come in here with a grinder, knock it off. I'm not going to make you guys watch this, uh, but that's what we're going to do. Well, I'm not going to lie, that hurt a little bit to uh, grind that knob off. But I, again, I just don't know what else to do. I'm happy with how it turns out. While I got this all opened up, I am going to come in here with a flashlight. I just want to kind of look down inside this gearbox and make sure I don't see anything that's uh, any red flags. And just looking in here, all of the gear teeth look to be in excellent condition. It, I can tell that lubrication, there's, there's pipes and stuff that, that uh, put lubrication where it needs to go. All that looks good. Um, yeah, the oil even, oil even looks pretty clean. So, um, yeah, that looks good. All right, we're going to see if we can get that back on here now. One other thing that I noticed a while ago is I got these little washers. These need to go on the top, not on the bottom. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull those off before I bring that over. Let's go get it and see if we can set it in place. I think that's gonna work. All right, um, I'm gonna need to get some things lined up here. Go ahead and put these washers back up on top. It needs to kind of push in, I believe. I'm going to take those off for right now. I may need to make some bigger ones to go up there. Let me see if I can get this thing lined up on, the, on this down here. I think we are ready here to Put our plate back on, kind of bolt this all back together. I've got some socket cap screws that we will be um, putting in here. The originals were just a flathead screwdriver, but uh, I don't have any of that style. These will work just fine. So let me go ahead and get these kind of started. I'm going to snug them at the moment until we get them all lined up. All right, I'm going to tighten them all up.
we'll note I got one missing there. I only had four of these, uh, the size cap screw. I'm gonna have to order some more of those, but we'll get those in and I'll put that fifth one in down there on the bottom. Now, even though we've got the bolts in down here, the way this is designed is there's two set screws that kind of go in an angle here and it fits down on the flange on this casting. And really that is designed where most of the weight is a uh, bore on these uh, little set screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these back in there. And we're just gonna basically just screw them down and tighten them as tight as we can get them. And that will make sure again, that the weight on this is just bearing on the casting and not on these, uh, these uh, cap screws. Let me get this put in. There's two of them, one on each side. And just to make sure these are down is really nice and tight, I'm just gonna use a wrench to put a little extra torque on those and that should bear the weight. All right. I noticed while I was cleaning these up, there's a little bit of rust and actually a couple of little dings on a couple of these uh, overarm supports. I'm just gonna take some emery cloth and I'm just gonna kind of go around these all around them and just make sure we've kind of got all the gunk and rust spots, rust, etc., off of these. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna do take a few minutes and kind of polish these up. And I think we'll have this pretty well installed. I point out here on the very front of one of the bosses, we have another serial number. We showed the serial number on the machine a while ago. This is the serial number for the actual parking attachment. And it is 1-8477. I just looked that information up and uh, this was number one in a lot of 10 parking attachments that were actually made for a Model 3CH. This is a Model 3H. The CH uh, it was had some slight modifications. It was more or less the same machine as a, as a Model H, but it was a little bit modernized in a couple of places. And that may be why it doesn't fit up on that little uh, boss over there that we had to grind down. I'm not sure. Uh, but this was uh, made in May of 1957. So about 11 years newer than the machine itself. But it'll work. And uh, you can see it's on here. With that, Mounted. Next, we're gonna put our crane in. This is the just fits down in that little boss right there, and it swings around. This is what the uh, head will actually pivot on and allow you to kind of swing it around over here and mount it onto the machine. So I think our parking attachment is done. So, so we've got the universal head here mounted up on my gantry crane, or not gantry crane, this is my engine hoist. And there's a little ball socket that fits up on the top of this. Let's see if I can get that back out of there. You can kind of see it there. And it fits up in to this piece on the front. And that's where it kind of just hangs from. So we're gonna get that back in there, hopefully, after I took it out. There we go. And I'm going to let down on the Wait here on the engine hoist, and it should just hang from the crane there, like such. So now, this whole piece here can kind of float around back here, and we can put it up onto the uh, uh, parking attachment for it to kind of just sit and stay, or we can swing it off the parking attachment and bring it around to the front of the machine and mount it to the machine itself. If I can get it to swing. I need to put some grease down in that, in that uh, crane piece. It's moving kind of stiff. It's heavy kind of get the idea of how this whole thing works. There is an adjustment here. This piece on the front kind of pivots up and down. You can take this and raise and lower to fine tune your height uh, to get it just right to mount on either the 
the uh, parking attachment or the overarms. But there you go. I think I am going to actually take it back off and put some grease down in this and then put it back on though because it is really hard to swing with all that weight sitting on it. So let me do that and uh, we'll be back. All right, we got some grease in that thing now and it does swing better. It's still a little stiff, but not like it was. And I'm gonna try to see if we can kind of get this to go up on the overarms here. There we go. It's um, not all the way up on there, but the idea though is that it just kind of sits over here, it parks out of the way when not in use. And then when you do need it, you just come over here, pull it off. There we go. Swing it around to the front and uh, we can mount it over here uh, on the overarm. So we'll, Let's go ahead and mount it because uh, I'm going to need it here for long anyway. Got a job coming up for it, so I want to kind of swing it around this way. First thing I need to do is put the drive gear on. Let me do that. So to use this uh, vertical head, universal head, the first thing you need to do is mount the drive gear. This has a gear that powers it, and it basically is this gear right here. It fits up in here, fits up on that drive, and then there's some bolts, uh, cap screws that we'll use to tighten it up in there. I'll go ahead and uh, get that going here. All right, we got that mounted. And we'll swing this around. You know, I don't want to completely tighten it down right now. I want it to be able to move around, at least move up and down on uh, the dovetail because I need to get it lined up a little bit better with the overarms. But uh, that is at least left and right. And I can see in there that we need to drop it down about a good quarter of an inch. are coming in up top here. And they're just about all the way in, so we're good there. So now what I want to do is just go ahead and finish tightening up everything. I think we got her mounted on here. So let's uh, check her out here. We'll fire up the machine. Turn it on, and as you can see, the head is turning, just like we need it to be. So the nice thing about this particular head is, is that I can rotate it around in two different axes, so it'll rotate back here, and it'll also rotate up here. So we can make it a vertical head, a horizontal head, a, a angle head, whatever we need to, depending on the job that we're running. Uh, and I'm gonna be using it uh, as a vertical head coming up. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can actually undo this little bolt right here, run it over, and you can move the head out on the overarms. Um, when it's off the machine, you kind of connect it all as one unit, but when it's bolted to the machine, the back plate's mounted to the frame, the top plate's on the overarm, so this head will move in and out uh, fairly easily. So anyway, mission accomplished. We've got our um, parking attachment. My mind went blank there for a second. Parking attachment mounted. We got our vertical or universal head mounted and uh, happy with how it's going to work. It's going to make life much easier in the future when I need to swap this thing over. Uh, before I was basically having to mount this thing on and off with the, the engine hoist and it just was not very practical to do that. This way it can stay mounted on the machine 
And yeah, still a little bit of work to get it done, but not near the work because it is at least on the machine. It'll just kind of swing around where it needs to be. Well, there we go. One parking attachment mounted on the machine along with the universal head, which again, I need for a job to get back getting ready to do. So I'm glad that I finally just took the time to get this thing mounted up on here. Sometimes it's just hard to take a break from doing everything that needs to be done in the shop to do the little things that makes your life easier down the road. And this is such a case here. I've had this uh, uh, parking attachment now for, I don't know, probably two years. And uh, I, I keep saying like, I need to put that on. I need to get that on the machine. And it's just, you don't ever take the time to do it. But we got that done. Uh, happy to have this done. Uh, I wish the paint colors matched. One of these days we may paint this machine. I don't know, like I said before, I'm, I like a good looking machine, but at the same time, when you have a machine with original paint on it, and I say original, this machine's been painted several times. There's uh, a dark brown, a blue, a light gray, and a dark gray. So one of those is probably a primer color, but this machine's been painted in the past and eh, it probably needs up here. The parking attachment has, uh, looks like a primer color. Uh, a medium gray color, which is different than either gray over here. And then we have this green color on the outside and then up on the crane assembly, uh, it's actually a different color again. So who knows? It is what it is. Maybe one day we can make it all look pretty. Maybe not. As long as it works, that's the main thing. Guys, with that, we're going to sign off. That's going to be a wrap, as always. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Please hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new videos are posted to the channel. And as always, a big, huge thank you both to you that subscribe to the channel as well as those who support the channel financially through PayPal, uh, uh, through Patreon, et cetera. That really, really helps things out and allows me to take the time to shoot video and, and do everything that goes along with that, which does take a lot of time away from me working in the shop. Guys, uh, with that, again, we're gonna sign off. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.